Dodicurus, the largest armadillo in history, lived in prehistoric South America long after the extinction of the dinosaurs. It was the size of a small car, and it had such remarkable characteristics that it might have been mistaken for a dinosaur at first glance. However, Dodicurus was a member of the Glyptodon, a group of large, armored mammals that are now extinct. Dodicurus was very closely related to current armadillos, specifically the pink fairy armadillo, which is the smallest living armadillo species. Still, the Glyptodon were hardly diminutive, being both megafauna of their environments and the largest members of the order from which they originated, the cingulate ha. The Dodecurus was the largest of them all. The Dodecurus was discovered in 1847, and ever since then, people have known that it was a massive creature, measuring an average of 1.5 meters 4 feet and 11 inches in height, 3.6 meters 12 feet, and weighing more than 1.5 tons. This made it one of the largest glyptodons ever though it was debated as to whether or not it was the largest because of competitors like the famous Glyptodon. But when a huge 8,000-year-old specimen that was thought to have weighed an incredible 2,370 kilograms or 5,220 pounds was found, all doubts were put to rest. This specimen was dated to the near exact time the Dodecurus went extinct leading many paleontologists to believe that something triggered it to grow exponentially larger right before it went extinct. This large size was a beneficial tool for protection, but if that failed, the Dodecurus had two failsafes, one of which was its armor. The Dodecurus, like all Glyptodons, was nearly fully encased in thick, robust armor like that of a tortoise. However, unlike its predecessor, the Dodecurus was unable to track its head. Its armor consisted of osteoderms, which offered enough protection for its head, body, and tail. Regarding the body, the Dodecurus possessed a large, pronounced carapace that resembled the dome. This carapace was tightly anchored to the pelvis and loose near the shoulders. Thanks to the shell's stone shape, there was ample space within the shell where a hump could have been present to store fat, similar to a camel's hump. Albide was still present, forming a bony cap similar to a built-in helmet, and even though it had strong armor, it wasn't exactly weak underneath, especially in its hind legs, which were well-built and a focus for its center of mass. It is believed that the vast majority of the body's weight was carried by the hind limbs. Some paleontologists believe that this would have alleviated weight on the forelimbs to such an extent that it may have been able to partially stand on two legs despite being a quadruped. If it had been able to partially stand on two legs, it is believed that the cures would have used this ability for self-defense, observation, or feeding, in addition to their other possible skills. The strong rear legs would have been essential for swinging his tail with sufficient force a necessity as the tail was where the second failsafe, the club, was located. The Dodecurus tail was covered in a flexible bone sheath that allowed it to swing its tail side to side, effectively transforming its 1 meter or 3.3 foot long tail club into a wrecking ball. As fossils of the club were depressions indicative of a lethal level, this weapon most likely had an additional level of lethality. Due to its large shell and somewhat constricting armor, paleontologists hypothesize that the Dodecurus would not have been able to see behind itself very well, making it difficult for an individual to defend itself from predators. Instead, many muse believed that the primary reason for having the club was for fights with other Dodecurus, and this is partially supported by evidence as most damage found on their shells matches the shape of their spikes and the level of damage sustained. In addition, a person may have been able to defend themselves by frantically swinging without aim, which could have struck an assailant. The inclusion of armor and a club for protection against predators seems more plausible. When compared to its twin, the Ankylosaurus, the Dodecurus and Ankylosaurus represent one of the most fascinating cases of convergent evolution as both developed an extreme level of armor and sported formidable tail weapons. In addition to camels, deer, gomphothers, tapirs, and New World rats, 
there would have been Xenarthrans, ground sloths, anteaters, and other armadillos, as well as marsupials, toxodonts, and native rodents. Many of these creatures, including the Dodecurus, frequented open grasslands that were cold and damp and frequently experienced cold and warm temperatures. Cycles composed of glacial and interglacial epochs inhabiting open regions, the burdensome slowness of Dodecurus appears to have adopted a grazing lifestyle, with its teeth and jaw structure indicating that it primarily fed on grass and likely had a slow metabolism. It grazed South America's prehistoric grasslands for nearly two million years before vanishing along with most other megafauna during the Quaternary Extinction event, when not even its armor and club could save it. Currently, climate change is believed to have been the cause of its extinction. However, some believe that its most lethal predator, humans, may have contributed to its demise. As mentioned possibly in the last clip of the daunting, the Dodecurus coexisted with humans for thousands of years. They were hunted by them to some extent, as evidenced by a specimen killed by some of the first human settlers in South America approximately 7,250 years ago. Even though we don't know for sure if humans killed off the Dodecurus, if they killed it at all, or if climate change was the main cause, we do know that the Dodecurus was a fascinating animal and one of the most interesting to have lived in the last million years. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell icon for more interesting videos. I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Ooh.